press me on behalf of the higher education department as the minister in charge of uh, higher education and also with my two officers uh, who are looking after the scholarship for the state of Nagaland and its students. And you can kindly introduce yourself. Uh, myself, I am Paul Pichu. I am the computer programmer and looking looking after the scholarship that was. Hello, my name is Gedusi Likihio and I am uh, taking the charge as always this scholarship. Postmetric scholarship have started to be distributed for more than 40,000 students and the student community have been quite restless with regards to the amount of the scholarship with regards to why they are getting their scholarship late and with regards to many other things uh, which we can also understand their grievances and their needs. So I think uh, the way it is being done, the way postmetric scholarships are distributed are done by the Department of Higher Education under the government of Nagaland in a very clear and transparent manner. Since 2018 onwards, that is since 2019 when we started uh, again giving the scholarships, there has been no case of any disturbances in the distribution of scholarship. Many students ask this question, Sir, other states get so much, so much, why we are not getting it? Now, the government of India, the Ministry of Tribal Affairs, under whom we give the post-metric ST scholarship, gives us in two installments. So when they give us in two installments, how can the state government with a state share of 10% give it in one whole installment. Honorable Chief Minister, who is also the leader of the government today and the Finance Minister has never delayed in giving the state share. Yes, official procedures are taken. And especially this year, I believe that the post-metric scholarship has been a little bit delayed because of the model code of conduct in the whole country. And during that time, the sanction amount to be given to the states have been delayed for some time, but exactly after that we received it and it is already in distribution. Uh, how many students? 40,000? How much is it? So altogether 42,870. 42, 42,870 students receive the post-metric ST scholarship. To upload even those number, it's not very easy. Per day, the transaction is being able to do for only approximate from 4,000 to 5,000 students. So some students say that their friends have received, why are they not receiving? Every day they write, every day they email. My email is filled with their letters also. And not only that, my department officials, they get all kinds of queries. Yes, we accept the fact that we have not been able to communicate properly to the students, but it will not happen like that anymore. But the students have to also understand that government procedures and works cannot be, you know, overlapped and just run to distribute. Because all transactions are done under PFMs. Authentication of the student's name and their account number takes time. And even now, Postmetric scholarships all have been distributed, except for some, according to what I know, whose accounts have been redundant or is not correct in one way or the other. So I think the department will also say what it's going to do about it. 
and coming to the merit scholarship merit scholarship is a state chapter for all those students who pass class 10 12 with more than 80 percent marks get it and uh, those who get their graduation and post graduation with more than 70 percent marks they get it so the finance has already cleared it authentication is happening with the treasuries and accounts today yeah. so within the next two three days it will be released without any disturbances i also request the students and the people who are beneficiaries to be well knowledgeable about why some of them are getting less or why they're getting more because some who are staying in the hostels they may get more some who are not staying in the hostels may get less and this time according to what i know personally the ministry has sent a little bit lesser money 33 percent no? only 33 percent of the whole amount which means the amount of distribution to more than 42,000 students have gone down but the next installment they get they will get the whole 67 percent of the amount which will include the state share of 10 percent also we are uh, awarding to 42,817 students and for state merit scholarship like uh, we are paying to 4,000 424 students for merit and research and for merit and research uh, the amount com uh, the amount comes to uh, 6 pro 25 lakh and for post metric scholarship this time we are giving away 17 pro 81 lakh to the students and as said as said by our sir the rest of the amount will be uh, will be cleared in the second installment uh, for the students like uh, we just this this month itself uh, we had a video conference with the Ministry of Tribal Affairs and Ministry of Tribal Affairs has assured us that from the academic session or from the financial year 2024-25 uh, there will be only one time release as of now there are two installments that but from the financial year 2024-25 there will be only one time release, which means the students will be getting their scholarship at one go. Then that means one time payment, unlike the present one. And also we have another important announcement for the students from the academic session 2024-25, we are onboarding into the national scholarship portal. As of now, we are in the state, uh, state uh, portal. But from the academic session 2024-25, we are onboarding into the National Scholarship Portal for the betterment of the students and also for the uh, betterment of the state government. Let me highlight a little bit regarding the uh, accounts of indication, why it takes time for the fresh but renewal uh, applicants, they get it early. For renewal, since they have received the payment in the previous uh, academic session, they already have a PFMS code, their account has been authenticated and they have a PF, uh, PFMS code has been generated. So for them to make another payment, we don't have to authenticate their account again. So we only have to upload their PFMS code and so they are able to receive it very early. But for fresh applicants, since it's fresh, we have to authenticate their accounts. So we have to upload their uh, accounts and then the system will authenticate. Once the system authenticates, we have to download it again. We have to cross check, you know, and upload it again and see whether their uh, name matches with the account holder's name as per the system. So if the names are, uh, applicant name is different from the account holders, we have to uh, reject it or we have to uh, download it back and then we have to cross check again whether the student has correctly uploaded the his or her bank account or not. So we, when we cross check, we see, you know, the account passbook. If it is of the applicant, and that means the applicant has made a mistake when filling up the online application. So we recorrect it and we up, re upload it. But if the student has uploaded a different uh, bank account detail, the passbook of a different person, then in this case we have we reject it, saying that you know ac account holder is not uh, sorry account. Uh, is not the bank account is not of the applicant 
So for freight, it takes time for, uh, to make the final payment because of that uh, account authentication by the system. In a day or two, we are going to upload the beneficiary list in our uh, higher education website. So there, uh, the students can check uh, why their uh, scholarship has been declined or been rejected. We used to give our remarks why it has been rejected. So they can check the amount that they are receiving and also why some uh, why their scholarships are being rejected. It will be uploaded very soon. Oh, no question, but the ones going out from here, they will be staying outside of me. So what makes the difference in giving this way now? So regarding that, uh, see, the, as per the guidelines we used to carry out the payment, and for hostelers, uh, ministry give a certain higher amount than the day scholar. So, which means they encourage the students to reside in the hostel. So, like once they are in the hostel, they will be getting higher amount than the day scholar. And that's according to the guidelines. So, they are of the same class or studying yeah. in the same college. Somebody may be staying in a hostel, so he or she may be getting a little bit more. And someone who is a day scholar, but maybe staying in a PG or something, you know, private run, may not be getting that much. So that is the only difference that comes. And for 10 plus 2 and all, there is a smaller amount. For those that are going to college, there is a difference amount. Then furthermore like that. So everyone doesn't get the same. And I just want to clarify this. The ST scholarship amounts, I have clarified it with the other uh, state governments in the Northeast also with one, two of them. It is not different. It is the same. Mizoram gets the same amount. Nagaland gets the same amount. Manipur gets the same amount. Arunachal gets the same amount. And Meghalaya also gets the same amount. So many of the students say that, sir, they are getting 50,000, 60,000, and we are getting 2, 3,000, 5,000, 9,000. They should be knowledgeable. I don't accuse them, but they should be knowledgeable because somebody who is having a merit scholarship from Meghalaya or a research student may be getting more as a scholarship. But for the same category, for post metric ST scholarship, it's the same amount. It depends if some states may want to give it in one go by knowing the amount and the state putting the whole amount and releasing it. But usually that is not done. Because whatever the center gives, 10% of the amount is the state share. The states put it and totally the payments are through PFMS and through the portal it is given. So there should be no difference in the category of the students and their scholarship getting remitted to their account. Do you scrutinize or verify the eligibility of students applying for a scholarship? Because there are, I'm sure there are some uh, guidelines. Yes, as, as per the guidelines of post metric scholarship, uh, like they are supposed to produce, they are supposed to produce or upload uh, ST certificate and the income should not go beyond uh, 2.5, which means 250,000. So the basic, those are the basic criteria. And if like, if they failed to upload and plus the latest mark sheet, the latest mark sheet. So those are the three criteria. So if they failed to, to upload all those things, we are very sorry that we need to reject their scholarship. And like for in some cases, government employee, the government employee, uh, right, like for fixed pay children, they, they are supposed to be entitled. But for regular employee, they are not supposed to, uh, like the, the annual parental income is much more higher than that. So on that ground also, we used to reject government children. Yeah. Let uh, me just children. add to that, you know, for verification, the first level of verification is done by the institution yes. itself. Right. Okay. So once the institution verifies the application, it will come to our dashboard, the department's dashboard. So at the department level, we will verify it. And from there, if, you know, even though verified by the institutions, if things are not okay, then we reject it. But if things are proper, then we approve it. So there are two levels of verification for post-metric ST scholarship.
like for merit scholarship also like as said uh, by our honorable sir earlier students for 10 plus 2 students those who uh, score 80 percent or above we used to award them and there's no in, uh, income uh, criteria of there for merit meritorious students so like once they scored 80 plus we used to award them and for graduate uh, BA and for PG students like once they score uh, 70 above we used to award them and also we have a research scholarship also research scholarship we insist on the this we insist on synopsis and also the registration certificate all those things they are supposed to submit every academic session how many students are doing uh, merit scholarship and research uh, this time uh, we have uh, 4330 merit students and for research scholarship 94 of them 94 of them I, I had a question on the uh, application criteria for post metric uh, sco scholarship specifically. So there is this uh, parental income limit. I think it's currently 2.5 lakh. Yes. Uh, but I'm not sure whether the government is aware or not. But I think it's pretty obvious to the public that, um, including my friends, that a lot of them, they get uh, fake income certificates. So I don't know if that is illegal or not, but... Uh, I think it's obvious that it's not ethical because uh, I think the income limit is set so that you know the scholarship would be available to more um, lower income families. So would, uh, would the government be doing anything to raise the income limit for that context or? Uh, yeah, regarding that, uh, in the last video conference, we also, the nodal officers and those who are implementing the scheme, we raised that point. And we insist that it should be raised up to 8 lakhs. Uh, 2.5, this 2.5, 2 lakh 50,000 has been uh, in this uh, like for the last 10 years almost. So we insist that it should be raised to 8, 000, 8 lakhs. So hopefully the ministry, they accepted that one. So very soon the guidelines will be changed. We anticipate in that way. Thank you. Pray that our students community can be patient and perseverant because the department and the government of the day is committed to making sure that our students receive the best benefits in time. Likewise, according to my officers, the Ministry of uh, Tribal Affairs, which is a dedicated ministry for the tribals, in their video conference, I've assured that from next year onwards, which is from this financial year onwards, which will be next year's scholarship, will be 100% in one time. I pray and hope that that will be able to give a lot of benefits to the student community during their admissions time and their needs. So, should appreciate the government of the day led by Honorable Chief Minister Shri Nefurio because when it comes to the state share, it is never delayed. Whatever may be the financial crisis of the state may be, the file goes up, it gets cleared. And merit scholarship is completely a state subject matter research, you know, uh, scholarship. Six, seven crores every year is given by the state government. So we are thankful as a higher education department. So I think this uh, should be able to be taken in a more positive manner in the days to come for the scholarship issue. And next year onwards, it will not be in the state portal. It will be in the national scholarship portal. So the students have also to be aware, time onwards, they are able to access it in their digital platform. Every details they want. And we are going to set up an IT team for that under the scholarship cell. See, uh, it is very challenging. You know, it's very challenging to uh, answer each and every student's queries. Yeah? 
it's not only for me but also for my officers it's very challenging to answer each and every message each and every query each and every question from the student side but uh, if they also are able to communicate in the better manner like our officers have said it's being uploaded in the website of the higher education department each and every detail of each and every student who are benefiting this time so if someone who, who thinks that they are rightfully they deserve it and they have not got it then they can write to the department through their through their colleges and we will try to see what can be done i was also asking them why does the department as my department in charge do not uh, print it out in the newspaper of all the beneficiaries then it, uh, we have come to know that it is going to be more than 1100 pages to give 42,000 beneficiaries in the newspaper with their details so <coughs> if that happens the whole department's budget will go there so it's not possible to print in any newspaper 1100 pages only for our students or for the higher education department so they should look into the website and check. I've also seen it's as per colleges, every college that is there, how many students are getting it, who are they, what is the amount, it's all there. So they can check and if they are not, their names are not there, then they should, uh, you know, write through the correct platform of the institution again and get back to the department. Applying for national on the national level of scholarship, and some are applying from the state scholarship, and uh, they are getting mixed up uh, because of that. And uh, some are getting from both, and some are getting rejected from both. How are you uh, figuring out how uh, they are applied to only one, and how are you uh, rejecting, and how are you giving to uh, some students? Uh, this is a problem when the students apply for two scholarship schemes implemented by different agencies. So uh, we, what we have been doing well is that we have been instructing the institution model officers at the institution level to apply only for one scholarship or verify only for one particular scheme. Otherwise from our level because ours in the, in the state portal, whereas uh, like for example minority scholarship is in the national scholarship portal. So those are two different platforms and we cannot cross check. So that is where the problem also comes and for post metric ST like as highlighted earlier, we will be onboarding the national scholarship portal. So there, whatever scholarship schemes are there, I, the students will not be in a position to avail more than one scholarship once we go in, in that particular platform. The system will check itself. Yeah. So all the duplication or double, this application will be rejected by the system.